There are many cases in the history of the world, and especially in the United States that has not been solved even after years. But how is it possible that the police can't solve the case? Today we talk about a similar cold case that could not be solved even after 64 years. So let's take you back to 1957. Philadelphia has always been famous for its forests, and the forests in the mountains here were full of animals. For this reason, the government banned the hunting of animals here at that time to save the wildlife, and whoever was caught hunting here was arrested by the police and had to pay a heavy fine. For this reason, hunters used to stay away from this forest. But there were some hunters who knew that the police did not come to this place most of the time, and if they hunted here, the police might not find out. And with this intention, some hunters had set traps to catch rabbits despite the van here. It was a morning in February 1957. A hunter came here to check his trap to see if there was a rabbit caught in it. As he approached his trap, he noticed that there was a cardboard box near the trap. He assumed that there might be garbage in the box and that someone had dumped it there. But when he looked inside the box, he realized that there was a large doll inside the box. But when he looked carefully, he was surprised to see that the doll wasn't a doll, but it seems to be the body of a little child. He immediately thought of informing the police, but it occurred to him that if he told the police, the police would know that I had set a trap here and would arrest me. So, fearing arrest, so he choice to ran away. The next day, a college student passed by on the street and he saw a very cute baby rabbit. Seeing that the little rabbit went toward the forest, the boy knew that the hunters in the forest had set traps to catch the rabbits and this little rabbit would get caught in those traps. The boy ran after the rabbit in the forest to save it. He could not find the rabbit, but his eyes fell on the cardboard box. He panicked when he saw the body of the child inside the box. The boy thought that if he told the police, the police might suspect him, and he would also be caught. So he also ran away from there. The next day, when the boy was listening to the news on the radio, he heard that a four-year-old girl was missing from home, and her parents were very worried. The boy thought that the body he saw in the box might be that of the four-year-old girl. He immediately informed the police about the box. Police reached the spot. It was found that the body was not that of the four-year-old girl, but it was the body of a small boy. The boy's body was not clothed. The body was wrapped in a blanket and thrown away. There were surgical scars on the body and large deep cuts on the chin and heel. The police hoped that the child belonged to a nearby town and that they would soon reach his relatives, but it was not the case. The police interrogated and took fingerprints, but all in vain. They could not make any progress in the case. The police made a list of missing children from all the surrounding areas and contacted the parents of all of them, but no one could identify the child. Now all the hopes of the police were on the medical examination. The medical examination of the body revealed that the child was killed by a blow on the head. Before being killed, he was also immersed in water and was subjected to a lot of torture as there were marks of torture on his body. The police decided to seek help from the public. The police printed more than 400,000 flyers with the child's picture on them and distributed those flyers in all the surrounding areas. Apart from this, the police also printed the photo of this child on the electricity and gas bills so that someone who knows him can find it. House-to-house -house inquiries were made and various police stations and hospitals were visited, but all in vain, nothing was availing. The police were not getting any clues that could help them move forward in the case. The police re-examined all the items found there, and the first thing they noticed was that cardboard box with a serial number on it. It was a box of bassinet, bought from a nearby store. From the records of the store, it was found that 12 such boxes have been sold, but it was not known who bought these boxes. The blanket in which the body was wrapped was a cheap blanket available in many stores. Thousands of people bought such blankets every day, so the killer could not be reached through the blanket. A check of the records revealed that thousands of these blankets have been made and delivered to various parts of the U.S. in the past few months. 
there was nothing but disappointment. The police also found a blue cap near the body with the stamp of the shop on it. The police reached the shop with the hat. The owner of the shop said that he had made this hat on the demand of a customer. He was a boy between 26 and 30 years of age. But after buying the hat, she never saw the boy again. The police visited every hat-making store, but could not find any information. Now the police were giving up because they had done everything. The police gave up hope and buried the child's body in the graveyard after the postmortem. After the police gave up, one day the police received a call in which a man said that he knew who this child was and who had killed him. The man also gave the police the address of a house. The police were happy that the case would be solved now. When the police reached the said house, there was a similar blanket that was put on the body of the child. Apart from this, the similar cardboard box in which the child's body was found was also present in this house. The police were now beginning to believe that they were very close to cracking the case. But further investigation revealed that the call received by the police was fake and the caller was lying. The people living in this house had nothing to do with that child. When the police asked the man why he lied, he said that the police offered a $1,000 reward for information in the case and that he wanted to win the reward based on false information. The case had passed many years, and the public and the police had forgotten it, but suddenly there was a new twist in the case. A woman called the police and said that the baby was bought by her mother, and her mother used to beat this child. The woman said that her mother had made baked beans for the child, and after eating them, the child vomited and the mother beat him hard. After that, my mother tried to bathe him, but when the child teased her, he was beaten while bathing, due to which he died. And then my mother threw his body in the forest. These revelations came as a surprise to the police, as the police, when they conducted the post-mortem, found that the child's last meal was baked beans, and he was dipped in water before he was killed. But all this information was not made public by the police, so the police were 100% sure that this woman was telling the truth. But the hopes of the police were dashed again. The police found out that the woman who was making revelations was a mental patient, and she kept saying such things. Neighbors of this woman also said that this woman is not mentally well. And we have been living with them for years. There was never any child in their house. And thus, the last way to solve this case was also closed. The police, media, and public had lost motivation to solve the case and slowly the case entered the list of cold cases. Today, almost 64 years have passed, but still no progress has been made in this case. And the soul of that child, still awaiting justice. Do you think that this case will be solved one day? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update about our future videos.